In this video, let's take a look at the text field component from Material UI. Text fields allow users to enter text in the browser. For example, text fields in a user registration form, login form, checkout page, etc. There are quite a few props to learn about, so let's take this one step at a time. Let's begin by creating a new file in the components folder. MUI text field dot tsx. Within the file, I'm going to create a new component. I'm going to import the stack component from material UI for a better layout. In the JSX, use stack instead of the div tag. Let's set spacing is equal to 4. I'm also going to create a new row stack to group together the first set of text fields. Please note, this is only for the purpose of the tutorial to ensure the UI looks clean. You don't have to do this. Now to make use of the MUI text field, we need to import the text field component. So at the top, import text field from at MUI slash material. Let's invoke the component. On the text field, we specify a label prop which is the label content. For example, label is equal to name. If we now include this component in app component, and comment out the button component from the last video, head to the browser, we should see our text field component being displayed. We also see the label, which is name. If you click inside the text field, the label automatically becomes a floating label with a smooth transition. This is your basic text field component. Now let's look at the variants. We have three variants and outlined is the default variant. So if we specify variant is equal to outlined Take a look at the browser, we see the same text field from before. However, we can make copies of this text field component and specify the second variant as filled and the third as standard. Take a look at the browser and we see all three variants being displayed, filled and standard. Now let's take a look at the size and color props. Size can either be small, medium or large and color can be one of the predefined colors from the theme palette. For example, if I create a new stack with same direction and spacing props from before, add a new text field but this time the label is small and secondary. Size prop is equal to small and color is equal to secondary. Take a look at the browser and the text field is smaller. When you focus, you can see the secondary purple color. Primary and this is secondary. Next, let's take a look at a few form related props as text fields are primarily used in forms. The first one is the required prop. And what that does is adds an asterisk to the label. So let me create a new stack. The label is going to be form input and we add the required prop. Take a look at the browser and we see the asterisk next to the label. Next, we have the helper text prop, which adds help text to the input. For example, helper text is equal to the string, do not share your password with anyone. 
Take a look at the browser. And you can see the helper text being displayed in small right below the input field. The next prop we have is the type prop, which corresponds to the type attribute of an input element. For example, let's set this as password. So label is going to be password and we add the type prop, which is also going to be equal to password. Now, when we type in, we don't see the text. You can also disable it using the disabled prop. So disabled, head back to the browser, and you can see I am unable to edit this field. The field is also grayed out. Now, if you don't want to disable but prevent the user from editing the field value, you can make it read only. For that, we use the input props prop. I'm going to make a copy of the text field, change the label to read only, and add the input props prop and we set read only to true. If we now head back to the browser, you can see that we can focus the input but can't edit. It is read only. Now we can also add prefix and suffixes to a text field. For that, we use the input adornment component. Let me show you an example to understand what it does. First, import input adornment from material UI. Next, create a new row stack with two text fields. One with the label amount and the other with the label weight. Now, on the amount field, we are going to specify the input props prop. The text field component is a wrapper around an input component and we use input props to target the underlying input component. So here we specify start adornment and this is going to be equal to our input adornment component with the prop called position is equal to start and the content is going to be the dollar sign. Similarly, for the weight text field, we're going to add the input props prop, but this time we're going to change start adornment to end adornment. And on the input adornment component, position is equal to end, and the content is going to be kilogram. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you can now probably understand what adornments do. They act like prefixes and suffixes. The input adornment doesn't have to be just text. You can also use icons. A great example would be that of the eye hidden or visible icons you would normally use with a password input. I want you to try that out as an exercise. Find the visibility icon from material UI icons and set it as the end adornment for a password text field. Let me know in the comments if you were able to get that done. The last forms related prop I want to talk about is the error prop which toggles the error state. On the form input text field, if I set the error prop, Head back to the browser. You can see the error state for the text field. The helper text prop can be used to feed back validation messages to the user. Let's make this a more real world text field and handle the value and on change props and connect it with the error state. Back in VS Code, at the top, import use state from React. And within the component, create a state variable. Let's call this value, set value, and the initial value is an empty string. On the text field, 
add the value prop and set it to value. Next, add the onChange prop. This is going to be an arrow function where we call set value passing in event.target.value. But now that we have the value as a state variable, we can use it to conditionally set the error state and render the appropriate validation message. So error is going to be equal to not value and we add helper text is going to be if there is no value required otherwise do not share your password with anyone. If we now take a look at the browser, we see the error state since the input is empty. Type a value, the error state is removed and the helper text also changes. Ideally, you would want the error state not on page load but on blur but that is a job for a form library like Formic and not Material UI. All right, I hope you've now got a good idea about the text field component and its props. In the next video, let's look at the select component.